just started a quick sketch, so I'd have something to start with. Because it's kind of scary staring at the white page. Uh-huh. But the idea behind it was I was going for this werewolf, find a wolf, like meets uh, um, greyhound, kind of kind of sleek, maybe meets like a sea lion. That was the idea. Okay, yeah, this is what I want to show you. Just something based off of uh, this is some real quick illustration. Something based off circles, something based off of more rectangular type shit. going for thinking about this wolf man thinking about what I was going to draw thinking about just the the basic uh, different feeling you get from a character that looks something like this versus something that looks maybe like that Uh, it's kind of a very kind of visceral kind of guttural relationship it's really based off the fact that this one's based off of these shapes and this one, what did I say? Yeah, based off of these shapes, mm-hmm. right? Thinking about that interaction, just creating a really interesting organized um, relationship between the shapes, but also what those shapes do psychologically to people that are looking at them. You know, this, this guy feels much stronger, much uh, um, like you break against him. This guy maybe feels a little more like, uh, yeah, you know, maybe. I mean, you know, they, they might make a good pair or something like Laurel and Hardy, you know? <laughs> you know they're, they're, there's a definite... Uh, <laughs> there's a definite reason that those types of things work, you know? Kramer and uh, Newman. You know? Kramer and Newman. There's those different, those different shapes that contrast well with each other. So let's see. So what I started was just a quick little sketch. Um, I, I really loved in school watching how different people work. I tend to work uh, very fluid, kind of haphazardly. Uh, I've had friends of mine describe it as like a controlled free fall. <laughs> so I kind of just kind of react to what's on the page and just start cutting and kind of violently playing with stuff. And then, you know, hopefully I get something okay. So, but uh, I do have a few things that I do specifically, you know, let me get in there. See if we can open some of this uh, reference I have up here. Some Dara. We don't have anything we can get like in Photoshop. I mean, in where you can like see all the images, can we? No. Bridge. Oh, okay. Browse. open up some of these. Really good to uh, think about anatomy. You're dealing with like a dog and a man, so you might want to get some information on how those muscles relate to one another. Pretty much everybody on the planet is kind of based off the same structure. Let's open some of these. It's a cool little seal there. Cool manta ray. Something feels kind of slick. That's very good. Okay. Starting to bring in. So we're we're kind of thinking. I've I've kind of gone through the sketch stage. I've got something that I think works, that I like. And I'm really starting to try and inform that idea with some of this reference. Starting to think about, you know, maybe just the way the patterning on a seal, something maybe the the difference between these kind of opposites, this this kind of slick spotty pattern, it's really interesting kind of linear hairy wolf type thing. Um, you know, interesting shapes of those greyhounds, slick. They look fast, thin. It's pretty cool. He looks fast too. 
right there, scary. Some other, uh, it's really interesting the way kind of a dog's chest kind of comes together at a much thinner point. And kind of the pectorals are a lot smaller and his shoulders are rotated forward. So it's just air human. So let's start playing around with this. Set some of this stuff up. We usually like to work like that. Start grabbing images and just kind of bouncing off them. couple uh, brushes I really only use. You can see this is all different too. Interesting. That's the one. Nothing fancy. Just kind of gives me something chunky I can kind of start playing with. I like to use shape first. Oh. Really kind of starting to carve into something. Thinking about form, not really doing a whole, whole lot with line, as well as the airbrush and the dodge and burn tool and so on. Let's see. Let's just start developing some of this structure in the body, kind of relating it back to where we are at. Let's do a dog reference. Little greyhound guy. Thinking maybe got a light source kind of coming top, top down, to the right hand side. It's interesting. It like resizes every single time you zoom in. Huh? to working on a different machine and then you see things like drawn with your left hand. There's no possible way I can get a PC, right? Here we go. Gotcha. Thinking about some of this structure, maybe starting to bring some of this in here. Working straight to that rib cage. kind of like to work this way because you kind of get some happy accidents happening once in a while, things that you can kind of see. It kind of reminds me, you know, like looking in the clouds as a kid, kind of looking for stuff and going, oh, yeah, look at that, man. I see a, a werewolf in the cloud. <laughs> it kind of brings, it's kind of scary sometimes because you got a deadline and you're sitting there and you haven't got anything interesting that you like yet. You know, you got to turn something in. But, uh, I don't know, I think I'm just used to thinking that way and uh, the rewards that I get out of it, I guess, outweigh the negatives so far. Again, that hunch in there, you know, thinking about the, 
the pose too, you know, getting the idea across. I think it's, it's easier to design shapes when you're thinking straight on. You don't have to deal with perspective and things like that, but definitely a time like this, thinking about that pose and how it informs who this guy is. I think I've seen dogs kind of get in that pose before, uh, where they're kind of begging for something, and they got their their hands kind of come together in front of them, like the last trick was. And then if we got the bicep and the the delta is kind of compressed. Some of this stuff too, and get a sense of what's actually happening. I'm working a little greyhound. I like that real sleek, kind of long face. Um, brings me back to things I kind of always draw. Start to push it maybe. A little melancholy little sigh on the back of that side. This is reluctant for me. Kind of thinking about it like play, you know, pushing and pulling things, constantly changing. if we can kind of get something where the body this head can't really kind of bounce off of sometimes I feel like if we get the head kind of working it starts to kind of tell you something about more about the character if we get a shape that we kind of like start to kind of really find out who this guy is
this kind of thin face with this you know kind of melancholy look it's kind of looking like you know something maybe i hadn't seen before skeletal head, it's kind of big doe eyes. Kind of an interesting juxtaposition. Like those eyes can feel kind of soulful and also kind of demonic. Positioning things. It's almost like you're mushing ink around on a page. So you can get anything kind of different. Kind of something that kind of snaps.
afraid to kind of just reshape things, redraw things, playing around. I tend to do, I guess, a lot of almost thumbnails on top of one another. Changing things constantly. Maybe right. Right that position. shape and everything kind of maybe more inches than what I think what I wanted to try and get. sharpness somewhere on the character. Dude, I'm having I'm having hella trouble. It's almost like you have to think about every mark you're making because you're not able to just kind of react. Okay. Yeah, you know, something that feels centered, maybe more agile. You know, still kind of floating around. I mean, I tend to work, yeah, I tend to work like almost like thumbnails on top of each other. Constantly kind of pushing things, changing things, sometimes saving iterations. But, you know, almost kind of like, yeah, like you're grabbing a ball of clay and you're kind of pushing it around. You know, just saying, how, what happens if I do this? What happens if I do that? Sometimes changing, you know, you're changing the drawing, changing the pose. Yeah, you know, I think it definitely came from um, some instructors that I had mm -hmm. and some stuff. I really like working with charcoal, you know, because it feels like you can kind of manipulate the surface a lot. And um, I really like that kind of push and pull, you know, deciding as I move in through the drawing what I want to keep, what I want to leave. It's, uh, it's kind of constantly malleable. annoying. 
too every time I resize it. Yeah, usually try and at least, yeah, work on something, think, yeah, just react to, I guess, your first interpretation, and then afterwards, starting to bring some of that stuff in and say, oh, okay, you know, maybe I should, you know, maybe my idea of a ground, I mean, a greyhound is not what uh, I'm actually seeing. You know, you start bringing that reference, and you see little things that you can kind of add in, stuff that you can kind of use to bounce off of, react to. Yeah. Absolutely. And then just kind of think like big dark shapes and just kind of playing in the mud for a little while. So I think it, it just it's more satisfying to me. 
and then you start to kind of bring this thing out as much you know, like it's being birthed or something. So I, I, yeah, I like to kind of think through the process constantly, kind of almost recording the process, you know, kind of the thinking process. I, I mean, it's part of how I draw, too. Uh, it just gets a little boring for me when I've planned everything out, and then I'm just rendering, you know. There's fun stuff about rendering, but I mean, I don't, I think the, the fluidity of it is, is important to me. I think it's what I really like about drawing too. I mean, I really like you know, drawing is very fluid and it's it's more of a reaction. Uh, that, that gives me a lot of I think drawing fun. I guess I hate it when everything's all spelled out. Sometimes it's a struggle, you know? Sometimes it's a real big pain. You go through a lot of uh, anguish when you're drawing, especially when you're working on it. So what, what, are the <laughs> <laughs> what are the most common tools you use when you're drawing? Yeah, I'm really, I'm just, I'm just kind using of. Using the brush tool, yeah. the eyedrop tool? I'm using the eyedropper tool constantly. Um, just kind of grabbing values, setting up kind of a system of values that I can kind of just kind of grab from. Something just to kind of start reacting, just pulling, pushing form, moving bone structure around. Especially in something like this, if it's like a wolf man, you know, you want, you know, it's all kinds of different ways. You have a short nose, all kinds of, you know, you can do 10% wolf, 90% man, 50% possum, exactly. Exactly. You've got a little bandy in there or something. Like with some of this, it's kind of feeling kind of like foxish almost. Yeah. The head. Yeah, it's still got somewhat of a powerful kind of torso. <coughs> and again, just some longer, slender fingers kind of mimic that prey hound idea. I also like to use kind of adjustment layers. I think that's what they're called. But this kind of thing in here, and use a leveled layer to start kind of mixing stuff. kind of helps me kind of cut back into form sometimes, make big, large adjustments really, really fast. You know, just kind of think lighting and form-wise. Start to really kind of push that stuff around. And then you can just flatten the whole thing later.
Yeah, you know, I wouldn't do it. Kind of like when I started working professionally, we would, you know, it's just, they brought in computers and I just started messing with them. I mean, I had like one class back in school. And then, um, I don't know, I just really liked it. It just seemed like a natural kind of thing to me. You don't get messy, it's all in the box. And you got these really interesting tools and you just kind of manipulate the object like crazy. What's up, bro? You work for a normal type of professional setup. Oh, a PC? Yeah. A PC. <laughs> two screens. Yeah, two screens. You can't have reference on one. Set up there. Um, I mean, I don't have like a supercomputer or anything at home. Yeah. I got like, uh, I think it's got like three three gigs of RAM, you know, quad core. You know, just something I can run Photoshop on. Good work computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm just kind of switching back and forth between my grades. You know, just trying to find something to start to work. You know, something kind of fair. Because I'm thinking I might just crop this thing because I want to. I'm having so much trouble with the computer that I want to maybe get into some color stuff. <coughs> maybe crop it about right there. Because it, it's kind of feeling kind of kind of slowing down. So like the process of splitting up is like place your values and just leave it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I do all kinds of weird stuff. I break all the rules all the time, you know. Like I, yeah, if I wasn't as worried about trying to give you guys some kind of a process, I think there's a very good possibility I just throw color on it right now, just instead of playing with it, you know. Um, a lot of times I'll use photos just to get texture. I'm probably gonna show you guys some of that too, because um, I think Photoshop, at least, the, the painter seems really good with texture. You know, you get like kind of like a nice meaty kind of painting, but Photoshop tends to, to me anyway, kind of feel sterile. Mm -hmm. You almost have to build your own sense of randomness into the drawing. And I don't really work with, um, we're into the painting. Um, I don't really work with custom brushes because I'm not that much of a computer guy. Um, Plus, I like being able to sit down at a machine and go, yeah, yeah, I pretty much use these two brushes. That's about it. Um, hold on, what was I saying? Yeah, you got to build some kind of extra randomness into the piece. And I think it, it starts to help you kind of looking for different shapes. So let's see if I can maybe, let's see if I'll just crop this and maybe we'll just start playing with some other stuff. start developing this area a little bit more so you guys get a sense of how maybe I might take a bit more of a finish. I think this guy's starting to bug me right now. 